Hey everybody, Paul Foster here, and it's been a little while since I've been online, uh, took a little bit of time off with the family, but I've been back working on my project from this last summer where I teamed up with uh, filmmaker Micah Lyons, and uh, we put together a project that we pulled off in a crazy 13 days. Uh, it's still not finished, but we started going through, we're doing some work on it, and um, we have a scene here where I'm going to... Let me disable some music here. We don't need to hear all that. But the gist of it is uh, I have some footage of an actor. I'm going to drag this over here and just kind of show you what it looks like. You know, he kind of, he's kind of moseying on over. And he starts digging a hole. Now, all in all, this is a really cool shot. Uh, it was shot not that far from here. In, and, uh, but... You know, this is supposed to be 1800s Midwest, and, and it just feels a little bland, I guess you'd say, for lack of a better word. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and do um, a matte painting set extension to kind of like make this pop a little more interesting, make it more interesting, I guess. Um, we're not going to end up using the entire thing, but uh, I'm going to show you how you go from Premiere, and I've already exported this to Premiere, uh, to, to After Effects, and all you got to do to go ahead and go from there from a, to After Effects and from After Effects to, uh, um, to uh, Photoshop, as I'm drawing a massive blank here, but all you got to do to send something to After Effects, you just right click and replace this with an After Effects composition. What it's going to do is it's going to load up an After Effects composition over here. I'm going to minimize all this stuff. Now, I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to tease. I've already done this once, but, uh, and I tried to record it then, but, uh, uh, you know, it, the process of going through this, it's, it's, it's kind of like you feel your way through it. And, and uh, I've really enjoyed doing a lot of matte painting set extensions. I've worked on a lot of films over the last three years. I've had the opportunity to at least work on, you know, it's all independent films, nothing major. Um, but each time I get to do it, I learn something new. And hopefully through the process of me working on this one, I'm going to share a few tricks with you that maybe you didn't think of. Uh, one of the biggest complaints I've had is that the screen's always too small. I'm not making it big enough for you guys. I will try to leave this and, and just move the screen around. But for the sake of what we're going to do here, one of the things I want to do is I need to have a clean slate, which I have it right here when he's not on the screen. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here to composition and then you have to do save frame as and do Photoshop layer. Now it's going, what it's going to do is it's going to export this, this frame as a Photoshop layer. And so I'm just going to rename it to see producer team four. I don't want it to call it that. What we'll do is we'll call it uh, Perdition Scene 1 Grave because he's digging a hole. He's digging a grave. All right, so we'll go ahead and we're going to save that. Oh, contains track mat mats or blends modes, which are not available. That's okay. We're not worried so much about that. I'm just trying to uh, get this particular shot, and hopefully I did it correctly. And then I'm going to go on over to my folder. But the first thing I want to do is I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and take this animal one, which I really like this sunset. So I'm going to uh, let's let's flip this uh, thing horizontally, and then if you don't and if you know a better way to do this, I'm all ears, but if you don't flip it in another when it's on its own over here and you drag that image over here, I have never bothered to look. There may be a way to do it, and it's just a dumb, simple thing, and I'm not thinking of it. Matter of fact, I think there is. Let's see. I think I, I, think I may have just... I'm so stupid. Yeah, see? <laughs> Ignore that. So... You guys ever have a bad day? I'm having one right now. Okay, so I really like this sun being over on this side. 
and not overpowering, but I really don't need any of this other stuff. So all you have to do is you don't want, I, I don't like losing data. So I'll put a, um, um, a layer mask on it. And then I come over here, grab my paintbrush, you hit B or you can grab your paintbrush and then you can use the open and close uh, brackets um, up next to your inner key and you can shrink or grow that. And all you have to do is you make sure your color's on black and white there and then you just start stripping this stuff out. Now you're not losing any of the data, you're just creating a mat, an alpha mat that's gonna basically hide all that data. See, right there, nice and easy. Now the other thing you can do is you can adjust your opacity down. You, you take it down to 14% and it's gonna make it a much smoother layer. And what I want is to create this effect where the sun is just above the trees and it's creating that late afternoon, evening kind of deal. Now you can also come in here, you have these options here. We could screen it. That kind of gives a similar effect. You don't want to go too, you don't want to get too heavy. It's not pollution. Um, but you know you could screen this and that gives you a similar kind of gives you that afternoon glow effect remember you don't want to go too bright with this at least in my case I don't want to go too bright because it, there's going to be a color grade that's applied later and that's going to really have a massive effect on this so it's always good to go from here back into after effects and from after effects into your final so if you once you save this file, once this file saved, and as you, if we go ahead and and uh, I hit V to, uh, uh, come on, hit V to get out of that. If I go ahead and because I didn't end up using the exported PSD file that I saved as, if I go save as, and I go find uh, my Perdition folder, and I'm just going to overwrite this scene one PSD file because I I'm just going to overwrite that. That shouldn't be a problem. Then what I can do is in After Effects, I can import that file. So I can come in here and under Perdition, I, I can just go ahead and import this. When you do that, you don't, I personally do not like to uh, merge the liar, layer styles, wire styles. You have some options. You can import it as footage or composition composition. You can re retain the layer sizes. I'm not worried about that. I just bring it as a composition. I do not check I leave it as an editable layer and then it'll bring it in like this and it comes in as its own composition then I can pull it down and I can have it automatically inserted in now I've got a couple other things that are going on here that I've already done and one one specific thing is I've created a um, I had an alpha mat that I could do that gives me this cool matte effect allows me to go back here where it's gonna allow some of this some of what's come what I'm laying in to bleed through um, I ended up turning that off in this case and I got too many things open here so I'm just gonna go ahead and close some of these things and like I said I've already done this once so it's not like it's a big secret but I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off and turn this back on. I just had the ramp and it was a, it was kind of a subtle grade, gradient ramp that I put on there so that I can I can make sure that I do not affect this area right in here where he's gonna walk across. So now that everything's here, I can go and and if I save this, right? Because I've already exported this this as a After Effects composition. When I come over to here it should update there it goes see it's it's jumpy but you get the idea so now I can see it in real time all right so back to Photoshop where I was doing my work so now I can you know so if I'm in here and I've got uh, I've got my color grade let's just I had this color grade that I applied and show you the examples give you an idea what this would look like as you apply that and this is the color grade I was putting on this image so now I can look at the final output what it's gonna look like when I'm done obviously that's really strong so let's go back to Photoshop and continue working all right so 
you can take this thing and you can drop the opacity down it to where it's not so overbearing and then uh, you can continue to blend this in now I ended up using this same the same thing I can create another layer right create a new layer a new, new layer right then I can grab a color here like something like right up in there turn off the uh, opacity because I think it's just grabbing it the way it was let's there we go that's better this might be a little bit more get something a little brighter all right and then I can go into this layer right here and I can uh, go ahead and just cover that entire thing now I'm not going to use this just yet but it's going to come in handy later I think a lot of this is uh, I've done this once but uh, sometimes you come back and you're like why did I do that so I'm gonna go ahead and bring this out just a little more because I just I, I want to be real subtle on how much I'm taking out of this So much that that uh, I don't want to. That's just, I'm just basically feathering it back. Now the sun itself is kind of in a in a weird place, so I'm gonna hit V and I'm gonna kind of shift this over some more. You can see some of the horses because I really want this to be all the way over there on that far side. There's a reason for it because. In the other shots that I had done, uh, the sun, by the time we got to filming some of the straight on shots of our actor, um, it got, it, it, the sun got pretty low in the sky. So I want to make sure I put the sun in the right spot for this. All right, there we go. There we go. So now I can, I can kind of like position this a little bit to where I, I'm going to let the light the lighting kind of affect certain areas in, in certain spots but not in others so now I'm gonna turn this guy on I'm gonna bring this down to about I don't know 8% and I'm gonna start I'm gonna do the same thing I'm gonna put a mat on it and I don't want to do a hundred percent I'll bring it down to about 18% and then we're just going to start filling in the air. We're going to start, um, you can see, pulling the yellow out of the areas where there's shade. So there's a lot of shade on this side of the tree. So I want to make sure that I strip that out. And you can... You can kind of like work your way through this and by doing this you're creating depth and another thing I don't want is I don't want this tree right here to be as uh, engulfed with that that sun coming across I want it to be a little bit more subtle you know you can kind of go like this go down and all I'm doing now is I'm gonna go ahead and work on this so I'll just keep on that I could probably bring it up a little bit more and then I'm going to create this this area here where it's almost like a whoops oh wrong button it's almost like a, a kind of like a, a a valley if that makes any sense and so we're going to get a high yellow above kind of at the peak of this little ridge across here and then we're gonna get some stuff below so an easy way to make that kind of like pop a little bit more see how we're getting that 
So it can be on the ground, that's fine. I just don't necessarily need it in the trees. So. Need a little bit of depth. That might be a little bit much. The cool part about this is you can undo pretty much anything you've done. And so 55%, we'll take that back down. And, and like I said, we're gonna pull hey everybody in. fall foster. Yeah. Yeah. All right, we'll, that'll pop up there. Let's fix that real quick. Okay. All right, so I don't need a lot of. I want this whole area right under here to be. Kind of green. You can have the yellow kind of peeking in. But I really don't want the back of this tree to have any of this yellow on it. Because then it starts to look like uh, it's the sun's not bright over on this side. And the other thing I need to do is right here, I need to kind of take this down at the top. It's it's too much. So what we're going to do is we're going to grow this thing and we're going to just pull it. We'll get this all out of here. Kind of fill it in. The only thing I'm trying to do is kind of create this yellow across the bottom. Okay. So if I save this, I go all the way back to Photoshop. I go here, After Effects, it's going to, this should have that same effect. Oh, I added a layer. Oh, these guys suck. So I wonder if I have to reload that because I added a layer. And when you add something that wasn't in the Photoshop file, you kind of have to redo it, which kind of sucks. So if I imported that file again, it's kind of goofy, but what are you going to do? So there, now it's got it too. So um, I have the first one right here, so I'm going to get that out of there. Get that out of there. so and we're going to pull this down here and then you're going to get all those files so and if I saved it here it did this because the layer I added the layer which was not imported into this it, it if I'm making changes to existing layers it's fine but if I do something after the fact it's not so then I can come all the way over here to here and we can see what the effect is obviously this is really strong it's it's pretty much overkill so I, I just need to tone this down some more and I do that in Photoshop now so what I can do is I can go here and here and uh, well which one's which all right so that one I could probably do go ahead and do let's see that's good do the bright screen that's cool here I think we just need to kind of taper it down maybe about another 10 percent and then once we save this oops what did I do okay so I'll save it come over here to premiere in the after effects it should update it Let's see. Should update it. Being stubborn, isn't it? Save that here. It's thinking long and hard. Okay, yeah, it looks like it did it. And then it should apply it here. Being really stubborn right now. Not really sure why. But that's okay. All right, so when you when you go back and you compare this to uh, 
And if I hit Control J, I can duplicate this. And just for a point of reference, I can bring this up to here, right? So like this was set to 24. Let's bring it up just just so you can see the original. After and it's definitely a lot more color. I can get him out of the shot. Like I said, I'm only he's only here so I can use him as a point of reference. Um, I can come right there and then I can switch the colors. Uh, put a brush back on and just just kind of like highlight this hill a little bit more. You know, kind of make it pop. Okay, so I have all this stuff. Now I've got my atmosphere in place. Uh, it's definitely more interesting than just the straight blue sky. Um, it might look, look a little bit overkill at the moment, but, you know, bear with me. Um, now I want to look at our other. I don't really need that one any longer. Let's get rid of that one. Let's see. I'm not really... I mean, there's some cool clouds here, but I don't think I really need that. I do like the mountains, but those are kind of plain. And w one of the things that I try to do uh, to simplify things for myself is I always try to think about where the sun is coming from and what color tones. You can always match this stuff in Photoshop. It's not a big deal, but I do like it when it's already kind of like set that way. And this obviously this is a 4K image. And uh, what I'm going to do is... Uh, I'm going to zoom out, and that's a Z, and then hold down the Alt and back out. And the reason I'm going to do that is because then I'm going to go back to V for my mouse cursor, Control T, and you can see how big this image is. Okay. And I don't need this image to be that big. That's massive. What I'm looking for, what I'm really interested in is this, this mountain clip here, kind of like this area right in here across the top. And... Uh, let me go back, zoom back in for you so you can see what I'm talking about. But I'm really interested in kind of like this little mountain peak right there to show up on the other side. Once again, just create a mask. Go ahead and grab your brush. Make sure you're at a, I'd, I'd make sure I was at 100% initially. And just, just start kind of, whoops, I'm on flight. You'll start removing it. And then as you get a little higher, you just get a little more careful. You know, just get a little bit more careful because this is what's cool about this is. Then I'll adjust my opacity down. Now you could ramp this. I mean, another way you could do this is just go like this. Come over here, grab this gradient, and just start going like that. And and you could literally cross blend this thing pretty easily right it's gonna get a little bit much probably not that high okay maybe ah, what did I do all right it's cool about the uh, most recent updates in Photoshop is you don't have to worry so much about uh, going into your history to un to reset things you can do your you can do it pretty quickly just with the you know Control Z. All right. So now that I've got that, I need to get rid of this. I need the sky. So I want this to be behind like that. So it'll pop. And now all of a sudden we're starting to get some cool textures. I still need my tree to show through it. And that's cool. Um, but what I can do is I can still continue to work on this mask. So let's, let's, uh, let's see if we can blend this in a little better. To do that, I'm really going to take this down. So let's say, I just want it to blend. And I, I, I don't want the mountain to stand out. I want it to be behind the trees. And so now you can zoom in and you can do things like pull 
was behind here maybe. And now we're getting a much better picture. And this is this is another cool effect when you're using these kind of these kind of uh, layers. You're allowing the back image to bleed through the front image. It allows a lot of it creates depth, and then you create this kind of opaque kind of blending going back, and uh, and that's kind of cool too. So, and so now, I mean, I do have to fix these trees here. Or I have to go back in and uh, and kind of unblend some of this on the the top here, so that it blends. It doesn't uh, it doesn't bleed through so much. Um, I can also go in here, and I think this might be. Where are we at? So let's clean this up. I'm pretty sure that's what's causing that. Well, what's nice about that now is I've got this tree right here that is pa is really standing out nice. You can see how I've allowed the tops of these trees to go away to bring that mountain range a little closer. I can also uh, go in, and if I want to experiment with this, I can go to Control J. That's going to make it pop a little more. I can turn this one off. Go here, and let's uh, bring these trees back out. So I'm going to pull this over here because I had trees all the way across. And so I know where the tree line is. And then what I have to do is then blend the mountain into the tree line. And the cool part is the sky that's above the tree, if you do this really subtle, it's a little bit, that was a little strong. Let's undo that. Then we can uh, create almost like a It's almost like a, a fog, you know. So, which is nice, and it works. Now you can get in closer, and you can you can make it because you don't want it to be this consistent all the way across. So what I can do is uh, zoom in. You see how. It, how that's kind of that bluish hue and uh, what I can do is I can allow some of that to bleed through let's see let's see if that's let's go here our brush some of this back so we're just gonna let these two kind of blend together see what it looks like and it 
could be that this is just a little too too much but for a quick one this isn't bad I'd probably go in and I would kind of clean up this line here um, don't make that as faint as it kind of looked I, I don't mind this so much over here I think it, it blends pretty good but when you're talking about you're just trying to create this effect that's gonna apply it. and I always find that if I add layers um, on top of the overall picture and and so if I added like a uh, kind of like another uh, if I added a, another layer here uh, or if I added another this what's this do yeah that's a little high overkill so let's not do that um, honestly I think it looks pretty good he's gonna he's gonna do his digging so let's save this and see what it looks like once we get it over to uh, photo to uh, premiere so let's go here obviously let's import a file once again it's making me import this thing it's really annoying okay so so it's got that whole thing that's cool let's um Undo this. Let's bring this one down. I mean, he's there, but it's all good. If I take this and I do this as a track mat on the footage that I had above, it's going to clear that up. And here's my, my guy, and he's now walking. Then I could do something like um, maybe add a lens flare or something. If you really, really want to go crazy with it. Just saying. Why not? So if I put this on that, you could put this guy over here. Right? Then you could apply. I mean, it's, this is overkill. But you see, what's a 35 look like? That's a little bit much. How about the 105? Yeah, you know, something subtle, not too much. Um, uh, we can have it blend with the original. You know. And then, you know, he's cruising. He's just walking over, trying to dig his hole. I like it. Now, the question is, is what's it going to look like once I put it in Premiere and I got this really intense bright white spot here right I mean if I moved it over there but it's got to be over here um, so if I oh what was that oh. all right so if I save this let me go back to my fit so you guys can see everything the only thing that really needs some adjustment is, is this li line here all in all, I think it blends pretty well. The light's all pointing in the right direction. So the sun's coming from the, the left side of the screen to the right side. Our reflection. There's all kinds of cool tricks you can do. And I'm, it's been a while since I've even messed with those tricks that you could, you could literally change where the sun was coming from. You could do all kinds of really interesting things. Um, probably more advanced uh, Photoshop users are pulling that stuff off. I'm just good enough to be dangerous. And I really like this because it's, it, it is subtle, but then when I go over here, um, let's see what it did. There's our mountain. Now this is kind of, this color grade is kind of overkill now. But the nice part is if I go into my, my coloring, you know, you can play with this. And the part of the reason why I brought this lighting, lighter area down here was I wanted to, um, See, I've got this intensity down. But 
we could see there's that that might be a little strong hmm. interesting it's a little bright but it allows you to play with all this you can you can really kind of expand on it so when you think about where we started with this shot and where it's going to end up in the film in the final pro product and it's a world of difference so there you go that's I mean that didn't take very long I think I think it's like 20 30 minutes worth of work and I've got I've gone from a very bland boring looking shot that has no real interesting aesthetics as far as the location and then all of a sudden I take us somewhere where you don't know that this was filmed even in East Texas because there's no mountains this big in East Texas. So I hope you found this video useful. I hope you guys are really enjoying this stuff. I'm going to be back to normal, normal workflow here shortly. Uh, we've been doing a lot of work on several projects, so don't go away. Definitely stick around. Show us some love. Hit that big bell button. Hit the, you know, hit the subscribe. Definitely hit the big red button and subscribe to us and then hit that bell for notifications you can follow us on twitter uh, follow me on twitter at paul underscore shp at twitter you can also find our the secondhand productions facebook page at uh at secondhand production films and uh definitely let us know what you think tell us in the comments below if you hate what i'm doing tell me i don't care um i'm still learning i'm still growing um just like you guys are but uh I hope you found this video useful, and now I'm repeating myself, so I'm going to get out of here. Until next time, y'all be good.